So, um, this guy named Morley deciphered two long count dates found in Palenque, um, and the date is 1116-2359 BC, um, and the other one was 14 days uh, later. Um, and that's 2,794 years prior to the Bhaktan of the Maya, um, around 400 AD. So why would um, these um, stellas have a, a date that late? Because the Mayans and the Egyptians are related. That's the exact date pretty much when the pyramids were built. Um, and I mean, we already know that the, the pyramid al alignment corresponds to Orion's belt. And that the Pyramid of the Sun corresponds to heliocentricity. And, and this one uh, temple in Tikal is aligned exactly with the Pleiades. So I think the Mayans are much older than we thought. You know, much older than we thought. I mean, yeah, they could have gotten their information from the Olmecs. But still prior to that, you know, kind of interesting. Um, during... In, in Kaleman's, you know, analysis of the Mayan calendar, uh, in the year, on uh, November of 06, sorry, um, was the manifestation of Quetzalcoatl. That's like when the energy of Quetzalcoatl um, was ruling. It's the budding uh, season. Now, you know, it's the night, um, fine-tuning of new protoforms. But right when I got obsessed with Nietzsche, like, know for sure that he and I were connected, was right at November 06, um, during the Quetzalcoatl um, sort of mindset at the time. So I was definitely obsessed with him because it was his season. Um, and since Quetzalcoatl, you know, was a white man known to have a full beard, because Mesoamerica didn't have, you know, beards or whatever, I find it very interesting that Nietzsche's mustache is extremely a big part of his personality. Like, he is known for that thick-ass mustache. You know, and if it was a beard, it would have been like Santa Claus. So, so um, I find it interesting that, you know, if Nietzsche is an incarnation of our Quetzalcoatl, you know, that mustache is a is a very interesting aspect of it. Um, but yeah, this is me ranting again. How are y'all doing? That's nice. Um, you know, the Maya, they knew of the wheel. I mean, they knew it because it was in like, they have these old toys, which are like dogs with wheels on the bottom. I don't know what it was for, but they knew about the wheel. They just didn't use it. People were like, oh, how could they know about math if they didn't have a wheel? Well, they're in a forest. They're not going to be driving around. I mean, they're hunting and gathering. They didn't really need barrels. I mean, they knew of the wheel. They just had no practical use. Us as Americans, we try and, you know, go fast and shit. Of course we're going to make a wheel. You know, um, so since Neptune is in Aquarius 3 right now, it's in the first house for all Aquarians. And it says, I mean, this is going to be for a while, not till 2012 will Neptune enter Pisces. Um, and in 1998, it's been in Aquarius this whole time. So it says for, for anyone who's Aquarius, this Neptune transits for you. It says it's a chameleon phase and that how you present yourself isn't really what you are, but how you relate to others by. And this channel is complete representation of that. Sometimes when you're just hanging out with me, I'm real, tr like, quiet, you know, modest or whatever, but, but I can get, you know, weird. But I'm saying I feel this transit for sure in this time of my life. Like, I'm learning how to relate to others because my ideas are so out there. I have to, you know, present myself not as I really am. You know, just how I relate to others is what I'm presenting. And, you know, I'm really restless because of this Uranus conjunct Jupiter transit. Anyone with Jupiter and Pisces is having this transit, too. So you got to have an alternate plan it's for this time. It says, interested in new philosophies, and you're really restless. This is so true of me. It's just, I think this was a perfect time to get a channel. You know, like, I got the channel. I was just going to play some guitar and some astrology, but... Realizing Nietzsche is a is an antichrist along the way it was kind of fun, you know. It uh it's never what you expect. And you know, another thing about Nietzsche and Quetzalcoatl, my sister and I, you know, mentions the incestuous relationship of Nietzsche and his sister, which I believe he wrote. 
So, apparently Quetzalcoatl became the morning star, Venus, because he was so ashamed of himself that he did have sexual relations with his sister that he tossed himself into the fire and then um, rose up as Venus and promised to return again. So, once again, another parallel between Nietzsche Quetzalcoatl. And, you know, it's not the end of the world. It's the end of history. It's not going to be a comet. It's just going to be telepathy, you know, which might even be a little more scary for some people.